My name is Wyatt Smith. I lead the business development team for Elevate at Uber. And I'm really excited to talk to you a bit about innovation at Uber, how we're thinking about what the future looks like and the role we might play in helping make cities even better places to live. And then specifically, a little bit about how, in the not too distant future, we might fly you to work every day. Um, at Uber, our mission is to focus on igniting opportunity for people. We do so with a global platform for mobility services. And we started out with a pretty modest ambition. Push a button, and a car shows up to pick you up and, and drive you somewhere else. It's expanded a lot since that time. Um, we're now very active in multiple markets across the world and focused on ways in which we can leverage technology to make mobility safe and reliable and increasingly affordable, such that people in the future might be freed from the constraints of needing personal car ownership to be able to facilitate work, uh, pleasure, and, and ultimately the way in which they go about living their lives. Um, a little bit about that growth story. Uh, Uber was started again here in San Francisco not too long ago, uh, 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago, next month, we were just getting going. It took us about six years to get to our first one billion trip served. The next billion took six months. A year after that, we doubled. A year after that, we doubled again. And last June, we eclipsed our 10 billionth trip on the platform, which enables us momentum as we think about other types of innovation it might enable us uh, to drive through partnership with leaders across the ecosystem. So I wanted to share just a, a little bit about some of the core inflection points in the Uber story and how those shape what we do next. Um, one of the first would be the introduction of uh, the pool product, which, which you saw uh, flashed up a, a bit ago. A second would be the Eats product, which took a very uh, commonly held idea around food delivery and then put it into a, a platform that had such good product market fit that it's enabled a growth rate of uh, over $6 billion of gross bookings run rate achieved in less than three years of operations. Um, Jump is a product that many of you may have seen here in San Francisco. It's an electric bike uh, and an increasingly scooter concept, which enables people to take short trips on our platform at relatively uh, very low cost. And it will link into uh, our ground-based options in UberX products, in Uber Pool products, and in the future, self-driving cars. Uh, we have partnerships with some of the world's leading automotive OEMs to unlock the future around self-driving and automation. And it creates a really important big bet for the future that leads to my team and what we do, focused on the future of aerial mobility. So what I have the chance to share with you in just the next five or six minutes is a bit about what that vision is how it makes sense, how it's not in the realm of science fiction, and is one that through collaboration across an ecosystem, we can make real for people across the world. So at its core, um, cities have a big challenge, and that challenge is that they increasingly are more and more congested, but there isn't more space to create. And because there is the challenge of indirectness and routing on the ground, combined with the volatility that exists through peak congestion at various rush times in the mornings, in afternoons, we think about this problem that just as cities increase vertically to take advantage of increased bandwidth as they grew, so too can we add a new dimension to transportation to increase bandwidth for how people move. We think it's possible to be able to deploy this service in major cities across the world at massive time savings to riders, up to 50% of your time back for price points that are not too different than ground options today. We'll share a little bit about how we think that that's possible. Um, it's really because of two technologies. On one hand, you have a rideshare platform, which enables the massive utilization of assets at rates that no one's ever been able to see before in an industry like aviation. And then secondly, you have these new vehicles that are powered by something called distributed electric propulsion. The technology that was, patented, or that was, that was advanced at NASA over the course of the last 30 years and enables a battery-powered aircraft to create vertical lift like a helicopter and then fly on a fixed wing like an airplane. So you combine those two things together, this really exciting, quiet, safe, reliable aircraft, and then a platform for distributing it such that you can reach customers and have massively high utilization. And all of a sudden, you unlock a new technology. So I want to share with you a 90-second video that is a bit of a, a vision for the future 
and then talk a little bit about how we're working through partnership across multiple parts of the value chain to be able to drive at the future being closer than you think. Thank you. Thank you. So that's what I get to work on, which is pretty cool. Um, Lynn was up here right before me, and she said something really profound about the importance of partnership and the importance on innovation being driven through an ecosystem of collaboration, and that's what this is. At Uber, we are lucky to be partnered with some of the world leaders in aviation. Many of these brands are very familiar to those of you in this room, and each of them are developing these technologies that in the future we will be able to deploy on our platform in ways that will help to transform cities as we know it. We're doing it through close collaboration on the policy dimension as well. These will be critical uh, to be safe and reliable operations with regulatory authorities involved every step of the way in shaping the product. So you have a technology that is looking to get to market, in many cases on a 2023, 2024 timeframe, but officials in the public sector are actively shaping it right now, and that's essential to being successful at being able to drive this shift change. When we think about what are the trade-offs of time for, for money, we look across our platform and see people making different choices about how they value their time and how they, they pursue different options on the Uber platform today. We're able to think through how a new modality, flight, would play into those options, and then ask people through surveys which we then can map across how they move through their cities today to develop a perspective about where infrastructure assets would be, would be located to best service the takeoff and landing of these aircraft from rooftops of buildings or from other converted assets. And you see here a map of how people move through Los Angeles over the course of the day, where, where blue shows pickup spots and red shows concentration of trip termination spots. Based on those surveys, based on this visual about how people move through cities, we're able to map where we see concentrations of throughput in terms of how people move, and then use that to be able to create a future vision of a multi-nodal network that we'd be able to serve with this technology. It then becomes important to turn to real estate and say, here's a big problem to solve. We need help solving it. And so we've worked with some of the world's leading architectural firms to give this challenge. How can you fly more flights on a three-acre square block of land than fly out of LAX airport every day. And they give us visuals about how you can start with something as simple as a retrofit of a parking garage. And then through time and through partnership and through effort and energy and intuition and ingenuity, be able to build something quite different, bigger, things that become iconic to cities, how you think about using unused space above roads or waterways to be able to chart the future of what cities might look like in the next 10 20, 50 years into the future. So I'll close on one of those visuals. This gives you a sense about what the future of mobility may look like as we integrate rail, self-driving vehicles, and drones, and aircraft to be able to create iconic brands and cities. 
that enable mobility and create opportunity and help people live their best lives. Thank you very much for inviting me to join. Thanks to Michael and Great Places to Work. And we wish you all lots of success at the conference today and in the future as we all make it closer than you think. Thank you very much.